Hello viewers, welcome to this video. I am Venkat and this is Just Me an Open Source Channel. Right, in this video it's going to be a very exciting one. Um, what I'm going to be showing you in this video is about uh, sharding in MongoDB. So sharding is basically uh, for high availability, for performance and so on. So basically you are writing your data across multiple clusters of servers, multiple shards. So um, we will see each of those concepts in detail in this demo. And in my previous video, if you have not followed my previous video, it was about uh, deploying a replica set. So that's going to be part of this video as well. So if you want more details, please uh, watch the previous video before um, looking at this one. Um, so, right, let's get started. So sharding uh, in MongoDB, it's not that difficult, um, but the main components involved in sharding are, uh, there are like three components. One is uh, the Mongo Yes. Uh, which is the uh, the query router and then we've got the config servers and we've got the shards okay so mongo yes is the uh, the interface to your uh, uh, mongodb sharding cluster so you don't use us an app they don't interact with the shards directly so this is the gateway so that's the interface uh, to your sharding cluster and we have config servers so config servers store data store metadata not the actual data uh, the data are stored individually on these uh, MongoDB instances, which are part of the shard cluster. The config servers, they don't have any uh, actual data, but the data they store is the metadata about the cluster itself and the configuration of the shards and so on. And the Mongo, yes, will uh, talk to the config servers to understand how the data is spread across the shard uh, sharding clusters. Okay, so you can deploy multiple Mongo, yes, they are lightweight. Uh, they don't uh, have any data for persistence or anything. And uh, uh, for config servers and for sharding, for sharding for each, for individual shards, it's always a best practice to deploy them as a replica set. Although you can have just one instance of a config server, it's not high available, right? If that goes down, then the Mongo, yes, instances, they don't have any knowledge about the shard the shard cluster. They talk to the config server, they cache some of the information about the shards locally, and then they connect to the uh, shard cluster. So if you've got just one instance of MongoDB uh, as a config server, then uh, it's a single point of failure. So it's always advisable to deploy them as a replica set and with a minimum member of three. So primary and two secondary. Um, so in my previous video, I showed how to create a replica set. So that's the same thing we are going to follow in this video as well. Um, and the shard, so every single shard um, has to be deployed as a replica set. Again, start with three members, one primary and two secondary. And if you want, you can add more uh, secondary nodes, secondary instances to your uh, sharding cluster. So that one is a single shard with three replica set. And this is another shard, okay? so. You can add as many shards as you want, depending on the uh, the load of your uh, the databases and everything. You can add, you can keep on adding more uh, sharding. So this is like horizontal scaling. So vertical scaling is like you've got a MongoDB instance, you've got a high volume of load uh, traffic to that, uh, too much of read and write operations going on in that instance. So vertical scaling would be to increase the number of CPUs, increase the amount of RAM and so on. So vertical, that's vertical scaling. So horizontal scaling is um, adding more servers. So sharding basically works by um, sharding the data across multiple uh, shards. So the important thing to note here is uh, if you've got multiple shards in your shard cluster and if one or two shards goes offline for some reason, although the entire shard won't go offline, it's very highly unlikely. Um, because we, we have deployed them as a replica set. So if one uh, replica goes down, um, we can fix it and bring it back. Um, but the shard itself will be highly available. But for some reason, if the entire sharding, entire shard goes down, still you should be able to um, access the data and uh, write data to your databases. It will spread the data to the available shards uh, at that point. Okay, so that's high availability. Uh, it also improves the uh, the read performance and write performance because you're not targeting just a single instance. You are spreading your load across multiple instances. So depending on your load, you will keep adding number of shards. Okay, so that's the concept. And what I'm going to do in this video is 
uh, I'm going to create a simple MongoS, a single MongoS, and uh, a config server as a replica set with three instances. And I'm going to create just one shard uh, with uh, a three member replica set, one primary and two secondary. So I'm not going to be doing this uh, shard. I'm not going to add a second shard because I'm going to do that in my next video because I don't, I don't want to drag this video. I just want to make it, keep it short. And um, for this video, it's about setting up the sharding. Okay, so I'm not going, I'm not going to go into uh, sharding a database or sharding a collection or anything. This is just uh, focusing on the setup. That's it. And in my next video, I will show you how to add additional shard uh, to your existing shard cluster. And then in the following video, I will show you how to work with sharding, how to write data, and how to uh, read data from a shard, and so on. Okay, and one thing to note here is um, for this demo, I'm going to be running everything on my host machine, which is a Manjaro uh, Linux laptop with 8 gig of, uh, sorry, 8 CPU and 16 gig of RAM. And as I'm running everything on my machine, I'm going to be running every instance of MongoDB and MongoES as a Docker container. So I'll be running 1, 3, and 7. So I'll be running 7 Docker containers, 3 for one shard three for the config server and one MongoS Docker container. So I'll be running seven Docker containers because I'm running seven Docker containers on the same machine. Um, I need to differentiate it, right? But in production scenarios, what do you, what would you normally do is put everything on its own machine uh, because if a machine goes down, it will take down all the MongoDB instances on it. So it's not advisable to put everything in a single machine uh, or share a machine with multiple MongoDB instances. So put one instance in each machine, right? So for that reason, I'm running uh, each of the MongoDB instance on a separate port. For example, config server, I'm running three MongoDB instances uh, for config server. So it will be 40,001, 40,002, 40,003. Actually, this Docker container is actually running the MongoDB instance on the default port 27017, but I'm binding that port to 40,001 on my host machine. So I know which port to access to reach which machine or which instance of MongoDB. So that's for the config server and for my shard, the first shard, I'm gonna use 50,001, 50,002, 50,003. And for the Mongo yes instance, I'm gonna be using 60,000 ports. So that's my setup for this demo. Let's go ahead and start doing that. Okay, so that's my terminal CD to play directory because that's where I do all the stuff. And I'm going to git clone a repository which I just created. Git clone uh, github.com, just me an open source, learn MongoDB. I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so I'm also going to open up a browser. It'll be easy for me to show you in the browser as well. Okay, so there you go. Let me uh, go to github.com. I've already logged into github.com. I'm going to go to learn MongoDB. Okay, so in Learn MongoDB, there is sharding folder, and I've got a documentation here, and I've got three files here. Okay, let me show in in the terminal. CD to Learn MongoDB. I've got sharding tree, sharding. Okay, so uh, that's the documentation. Uh, config server is a directory, and I've got a Docker Compose uh, .yaml file. By the way, I'm going to be using Docker Compose uh, to start multiple Docker containers. It will be easy to manage uh, from a single command. Um, if you had to run every single Docker run command, it would take a lot of time. So I'm, I'm trying to put that everything in a Docker Compose file for ease of management. Config server, docker compose.yaml. And for shard one, I've got docker compose.yaml. And for Mongo, yes, I've got a Docker Compose file. So. In my next video, I'll be creating another directory, shard2, and create a Docker Compose file. Uh, I'll be creating another three uh, instances as a shard2 replica, and I'll see. I'll show you how to add that uh, shard to the existing cluster. Okay. Sudo systemctl status docker, just to make sure that Docker engine is running. Okay, so we've got Docker running. And the first thing to do is to start the config server. Okay, so Docker, let me CD to sharding. Okay, and let me go into the documentation because that will be a little easier to follow. So 
if you want you can follow this documentation after this video you don't have to watch the video every time you can just understand the video once and then you can stick with this documentation so config server as i shown in my little notes uh, we are going to start a config server um, and we are going to start three mongodb containers mongodb instances and we are going to um, create a replica set for that so docker compose docker compose minus f uh, config server docker compose dot yaml up minus d so that's going to create uh, three docker containers and if i show docker ps so we have uh, three docker containers running that's good docker volume ls so it has created three docker volumes for persistence so make sure you enable persistence otherwise if you stop and start your docker containers it won't uh, have all the configurations you have done okay so that's done and we are going to we've just started three instances of mongodb we need to make them um, as a replica set okay but sorry i forgot to show you the actual docker compose file vi config server docker compose.yaml so that's a simple docker compose file i'm using the mongo official mongo image so those are the container name cfg server 1 cfg server 2 cfg server 3 uh, svr server okay that's not a problem uh, volumes i'm creating three docker volumes for persistence and port i'm exposing 27017 within the container to 40001 40002 40003 different containers three different names but the command is uh, going to be the same so the command uh, i'm running inside the docker uh, images mongod this one is important minus minus config server so that tells this is a config server uh, this these instances plays the config server role uh, in this environment and I'm creating a replica set replica set name is CFG RS so all these three instances will be part of this replica set CFG RS port and the database path data DB and I'm mounting that volume inside slash data DB for persistence okay and I can do docker compose minus F config server slash docker compose ps and if i do that you can see cfg server one three docker containers running uh, 27017 and they are exposed to uh, 40001 two and three on my host machine so i can access this uh, through these ports three docker containers they're all up so we need to connect to any one of these docker container to initiate the replica set so let's connect to uh, 40001 so that's the uh, command to connect to the uh, one of the Docker instance, sorry, MongoDB instance. Mongo, MongoDB colon 192.168.1.81 colon 40001. So make sure to update the IP address as per your need. So you have to update the IP address in the uh, in, in the in these commands. Uh, the Docker Compose YAML files don't have uh, although they have, they've got hard-coded IP address so make sure to change the IP address to uh, your IP address otherwise it won't work okay so cool so we have logged into the first config server it doesn't matter which config server uh, you log into we've got three instances uh, whichever you log into will be the primary um, when, when you do the initiation okay so the command to initiate is rs.initiate and uh, we are adding three members and the members are 192.168.1.81 so everything is running on my local machine but on different ports 40001 40002 and 40003 so that's the command log into any of the uh, mongodb instance in this replica set and run this command okay paste it that's done now let's check uh, the replication status okay rs.status okay so that's the replication status Let, let's look at the members so 192.168.1.8140001, so that's the first instance, and it's the primary. And uh, the 40002, that's the second instance, that's uh, the secondary member. And you can see it's syncing to 40001, the first instance. And the last member, 40003, which is a secondary again, so we've got two secondaries. 
both of them are syncing to 40001, uh, the instance that's running on port 40001. Okay, so that's all we need uh, for configuring the config server. So we've created the config server replica set with one primary and two secondary. So now we are going to go ahead and uh, create three more Docker MongoDB instances for our shard one, the first shard that we are going to create. Okay, for that, let me show you the uh, the Docker Compose files. VI shard one Docker Compose .yaml. So it's very similar. I'm assigning three uh, Docker volumes, uh, three different containers, three different names: shard one, server one, shard one, server two, shard one, server three. Okay, so 27.0.17, I'm exposing that to uh, 50,001, 50,002, and 50,003 on my uh, local machine. And the important thing here is the command. Uh, in For config server, we used minus minus config server. And for here, we need to use minus minus shard server. Um, so that makes it, uh, that makes these instances behave as a shard, as part of the shard cluster, shard member. And the replica set shard one rs so when i will when i'm going to do the second video uh the next video i will create an, uh, a similar cluster similar replica set but with a different replica set name uh, shard two rs for shard two replica set uh, make sure to carefully name the replica set uh, for config server we've named it as cfgrs so these replica sets uh, they shouldn't be having the same name each replica set is different so you need to give the name meaningfully and uh, uniquely. Okay, so that's our Docker Compose file. Docker Compose minus F shard one, Docker Compose YAML up minus D. Okay, it, is, it has created three new volumes and three new containers. And if I do Docker PS, so now you can see six Docker containers, three config servers and three shard one servers and docker volume ls so we've got three volumes for uh, the shard server as well okay so now we're gonna log into any one of the uh, shard uh, member of the shard and then initiate the replica set so at the moment it's three standalone mongodb instance and the only thing that's common to them is they all have the same replica set name shard one rs so now we now we are going to connect all these three as part of replica set by running this command rs.initiate. So let's log into uh, 50001. So that's one of the member of this uh, replica set. Okay, we are in there and I'm going to run this command rs.initiate. And this ID is the ID of the replica set, shard1rs. And again, if you see here, it's cfgrs. And there's one extra option here, config server true, which is very important. So if you copy paste it, it won't have any problem. But if you're doing it on your own, make sure you've got this option for the config server replica set. And for the shard replica set, we don't need that option. And the individual members are uh, the Docker containers running on port 50,001, 2, and 50,003. Okay, let me paste that. And let's check the uh, the replica set status. rs.status. Okay, so members, 50,001, that's primary. 50,002, that's secondary. And it's syncing to 50,001, which is the primary. 50,003, that's secondary, and it's syncing to 50,001. So all looking good. Exit out of it, and finally, we are going to deploy the Mongo Yes, which is called the Query Router. So you interface, uh, interact with the Mongo Yes, that checks the config server uh, to get the uh, cluster details, and then uh, through Mongo Yes, you connect to the, uh, the backend shard cluster. Okay. Let me show you the Docker Compose file for Mongo. Yes, it's a very simple one. It doesn't have to have any volumes. Uh, there's no persistence involved there. Um, version three services, Mongo. Yes, container name, Mongo. Yes, I'm using the same Mongo image for all my instances, Mongo, whether it's config server or a shard or a Mongo. Yes, it's the same uh, image I'm using. But uh, notice the difference in the command that I'm using to start Mongo yes. So Mongo yes minus minus config DB. So config DB tells you uh, where is the config servers, where are the config servers and how to connect to them. 
So the URI is the replica set name, which you know it's CFGRS, which we've defined, and the individual members of the replica set. So 192.168.1.81, 40,001, 40,002, 40,003. So those are the three members of the replica set for our config servers. And this one is very important, minus minus bind IP, 0.0.0.0, or if you've got any particular interface that you want to expose this, uh, you can expose it. If you don't give this option, it will be listening just on the local host. You won't be able to connect uh, from other machines to this Mongo ES instance. Okay, so I'm, I'm binding that to my host port 60,000. Okay, let's go ahead and start that. Docker compose minus F, Mongo S, Docker compose dot yaml up minus D. Okay, that's done. Docker PS. So we have now seven containers and uh, it's listening on port 60,000. So now we've got all the components ready, but if you have noticed, there's no link between the config server and the shard in the cluster. So in the shard cluster, we have just one shard with three uh, members in a replica set. So in my next video, we will be adding more shards. Um, I'm just going to add uh, one more shard uh, to the shard cluster. Okay. So what we need to do now is to add shard to our environment. So we need to log into the Mongo ES. So Mongo ES is running on port 60,000 on my local machine. That's the proxy to the Docker container. So let's log into the Mongo ES this time. Okay, so we are in the Mongo ES. So the first command I'm going to do is this one. ES search is for shard, shard dot add shard. Okay, let me just copy that and paste it here. Okay, ES search dot add shard. So that's the URI of our shard that we are going to add. So the replica set name, the URI format is the replica set name, which is shard one RS. And then the individual members of the replica set. So depending on how many members you've got. So I've got three members in the replica set. Depending on how many you've got, you need to update that here. So 192.168.1.81, 50,001, 50,002, and 50,003 are the three instances uh, in my replica set for shard one. So that's the command. Okay, so that's run and we can check the status of our sharding using uh, the status command. ESH.status. Okay, so you can see here, let me close this window. Nope, not that one. This one, yep. ESH.status. Cool, okay, so now you can see under shards, so there is one shard, so we've got just one shard. Okay, so the URI for the shard is the replica name, replica set name followed by the members of the uh, replica set uh, and the name of the shard, which is shard one RS. So as we keep adding more shards, you will see more number of shards um, in this output SH.status. Okay, cool. So um, in my next video, I'll show you how to add another shard and then in the following video, I'll show you how to use the sharding, how to connect to Mongo ES and how to create shard, how to enable sharding um, and how to create collections uh, that are sharded and so on. Okay. So thank you so much for your time watching this video today. If you've got any doubts or any questions, um, uh, leave me a comment. I should be able to get back to you at the earliest I can. And uh, make sure you understand this video before moving on to the other videos. Uh, it also has got multiple uh, steps which you need to pay careful attention to. Um, this is just for a demonstration purpose. I'm running all the Docker containers on my local machine. If you were to run this on production, I would advise you to look at the official documentation on best practices and uh, run the Docker containers or the uh, Mongo installation on individual machines and so on. All right. All right. Thank you so much and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.